Hi everyone, welcome back to Food Feeds. In this video, I'm going to talk about ethylene scavengers and ethanol emitters, which are related to active packaging. Before starting, I would like to mention you these two videos, which are already uploaded on this channel, which are also related with the active packaging. So here, this video, active packaging and oxygen scavenger, it mainly focuses on the definition, what is active packaging and what does it consist of, and also how this is different from the normal packaging systems. And I have also talked about intelligent packaging and how is it different from active packaging. And then I have spoken about oxygen scavengers, why we need to remove the oxygen and how it is removed. That is the methods to remove the oxygen, uh, to insert the oxygen scavengers or remove the oxygen. And also about the companies which are using this oxygen scavengers. So you will get a whole idea about this in this video. And the other video, I have mentioned the uh, carbon dioxide scavengers and emitters. So, which again talks about what exactly these oxygen scaven uh, carbon dioxide scavengers are made of and their application with examples. And what is the need of carbon dioxide emitters and the application part of both carbon dioxide emitters and scavengers and also the companies involved in this, which are using the scavengers and emitters. So, please do watch these two videos so that you get the continuity of for this video as well and I hope you have pen and paper with you so that you can jot down the notes as we progress through the video and by the end of the video you have studied this particular topic and also have the notes which you can use for the exams. So let's begin with knowing what exactly is ethylene. Ethylene is basically a plant growth regulator that accelerates the respiration rate and subsequent senesis of horticulture products like fruits, vegetables, and flowers. So the effect of this ethylene in the plant, much of the process are necessary, like the induction of flowering of, in case of pineapples, color development in citrus fruits, bananas, tomatoes, and stimulation of root production in baby carrots, and development of the bitter flavors in case of cucumbers. But in most of the horticulture situation, uh, it is desirable to remove this ethylene or just suppress the effect or the negative effects of ethylene, um, such as in case of softening and deterioration of the produce. That is, if there is a greater release of ethylene, then the fruit shelf life is reduced because the maturity and fruiting process is accelerated and thus there will be softening and deterioration much sooner compared to when we suppress the ethylene production. And also it induces a number of physiological disorders for which uh, we use the ethylene scavengers. So there are many research that has been carried out in order to analyze how these ethylene scavengers, which is the ethylene remover or suppressor, how we can induce it in our fruits or vegetables so that um, we can keep the fresh produce for a longer period of time. That is, we can extend the shelf life. And there are a number of ways to do this. The first is pot uh, potassium permanganate. It is immobilized on an inert mineral like either alumina or silica gel. So the second option is using films which are impregnated with powdered pumice stone. And the third one is a zeolite in the packet. We can just add it. And Everfresh bags. This is a this is a type of bag on which again there is a impregnated with natural mineral called Oya. And we can also use in the combination of these two scavengers, that is carbon dioxide scavengers and ethylene scavengers. There are combined uh, substances also, which I have talked in the previous videos. So this activated carbon-based scavengers along with the metal catalyst can be used to remove the ethylene. So now let's know what does the research studies tell about uh, this ethylene scavengers. Fruits like kiwi and banana have reduced softening when they are exposed to charcoal and there is also stay fresh longer bags. So these kind of bags will 
help in slowing down the natural aging process and it helps to inhibit the moisture entry and thus it uh, doesn't allow the bacteria or uh, it will not allow the growth of the bacteria. And there is another bag called Biofresh, which helps to absorb the gases, including ethylene, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, which are basically known to contribute in the ripening of the fruits. So by this, the exposure of charcoal or using the bags such as Stay Fresh or the Biofresh bags, we can still reduce the ripening process and in turn, it will increase the shelf life of these fruits. So now we will know about ethanol emitters. So emitters are used means ethanol presence is important. So why we need to use ethanol? Basically, it is a germicidal. It has germicidal effect. So it's a germicidal agent and it is effective against the moles and also inhibits the growth of yeast and bacteria. So basically, ethanol can be sprayed directly uh, inside the food products just before packaging so that it will inhibit these microorganisms growth. So let's see some of the research studies uh, related to this. So when they have sprayed the ethanol on the bakery products, it was mold free. So the shelf life was extended and the usage was 95% of ethanol with a concentration of 0.5 to 1.5% in the product. So one more method is using the ethanol emitter films or the sachets, which is considered to be a much safer method. And ethanol is effective in controlling the growth of moles, as I said, like the aspergillus, penicillium, and bacteria like salmonella, uh, E. coli, and staphylococcus. And using of this ethanol is also beneficial as an antifungal, bacterial, antibacterial agents, mainly for fish, cheese, um, but the majority application of this ethanol is used in the bakery industries. And these ethanol emitting films and sachets, which I mentioned, have been patented by the Japanese manufacturers. So other research studies to mask the odor of alcohol, that is, since we are using an alcohol, which is ethanol, some sachet contain traces of vanilla or other flavors to give us a better odor. They can be used in combination like ethanol emitters along with oxygen scavenger. Sachets are available. Uh, the size and capacity will definitely depend on the weight and water activity of the food and the shelf life required. So if the product has more water activity, then we need much more capacity to inhibit the growth of these bacteria. If uh, the shelf life uh, need to be increased just by a week or two, three days, then also the capacity needs to be reduced. If we are considering for a longer shelf life, then the capacity and the size will be increased. Uh, the usage of the sachet or the ethanol emitters will be more. And in case of break, bakery products, as we saw that uh, when we had sprayed the ethanol before packaging, uh, it was mold free. Not only that, it, it also reduces the staling uh, and it acts as a plasticizer in the protein network of the bread. So basically, it, it um, acts as a protective layer inside the bread and inhibits the staling process. So now we know why we use ethylene scavenger and ethanol emitters. Ethylene will fasten the ripening process of fruits and thus we need to reduce or remove ethylene from a product. Whereas ethanol acts as an antifungal, antibacterial agent and hence we need to emit it into the uh, food product so that it can extend the shelf life. And how we do it, there are examples given. Either it is in combination with the other scavengers or emitters or in the sachet form or either we will spray them or we can use it in a combination with the chemicals like potassium permanganate in case of ethylene scavengers, zeolite. So this is how they are used and the need of these scavengers and emitters. So I would like to remind you again, you can go through these two videos. They are really short videos and you can just get more information in the short duration of the time. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do it and hit the bell icon so that whenever there is a new video uploaded, you will get a notification.
and you won't be missing any of the food feeds video that's the end of the video thank you for watching i hope you understood the concept i would like to request you all to like share and subscribe the channel it would be a great help you can also follow us on instagram and linkedin if you guys have any doubts related to food technology you can just drop a mail and you will get the reply within a week so hope to see you in the next video as well thank you